Greetings people, welcome back to Greenshire Homestead. Uh, big question, can you run central air, conventional central air off grid? Yes, you can. Um, we've been doing it for a month and a half. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what type of system we have and how we manage those loads so that we can run that central air. We're not doing many splits or anything like that. We've got all the normal appliances that, that every house has. In fact, we have two, two freezers and two refrigerators, and then we also have two wells that each have a pump in them. Um, we got electric water here, washer dryer, um, dishwasher, microwave, coffee maker, all the normal stuff. We're not camping here. Um, for five years, we ran grid tied solar. During that five year period, every day without fail, I would read the meter. So I knew exactly how much power this house was using and how much power we were sending back to the grid. At that time, I, sent our, our, I set our air conditioner 80 degrees because I wanted to keep the, the amount of power we sent back to the grid high so that we would have that cre those credits built up for the power that we did use so that we wouldn't have an electric bill and that worked very well but we were sending so much power back to the grid when we went off grid i realized we've got a lot of extra power here so i went ahead and lowered the thermostat on that that air conditioner down to 76. my wife doesn't want it in any cooler now because she gets a little chilly even at 76. so um, we're very comfortable but we do, and let me tell you that the air conditioner that we have, that, that is a two and a half ton AC, um, and, and it does have a soft start on it. And this is only a 1,200 square foot house. It does have two by six framing that has uh, been spray foamed, and then I have two feet of cellulose up in my attic. So it's a tight house um, with, with a, you know, and we're very efficient, but it, it is conventional central air. So we have a uh, seven kilowatt solar array. This is a 15 uh, K solar arc here behind me. And then this battery rack holds six of the EG4 LL version two batteries. So this was at the time I purchased it, the most recent battery that EG4 had come up with. This battery rack and this solar arc work extremely well together. The efficiency of this system is, is very, very tight. And that's important when you're off grid. So, um, we have to manage the loads we, we, and we have really good equipment and we, you know, we have a very tight house but um, it's important that this battery rack stays full all day because I do have a design flaw in what I've done here. Um, I didn't want my solar panels on the roof because I need to keep the snow cleaned off of them in the winter time so that I can you know, still take in power. So I mounted them on the ground. I, I mounted them, of course, facing south, but they're on the back side of my shop. And unfortunately, this time of year, the first part of July, the sun is setting so far north in the sky that the, the solar panels are being shaded by that shop uh, at about 5 o'clock. So it's important that these batteries are full at 5 because we're going to be running our air conditioner 100% off the batteries. Now that speaks really good about the batteries. They're able to handle it. This solar arc and the, the, this battery rack are handling that, that AC very, very well. Um, I turn the air conditioner off at night when we go to bed, so it's not running all night. I just turn on the ceiling fan in our bedroom, and because the house was 76 degrees when we got in bed and then the ceiling fan is on, uh, it has not been a problem. We've been doing this for a month and a half, and it's not an issue. Um, so, and then in the morning I get up about oh five thirty or so and then I'll open the, the house up and let some of that cool morning air in for a half an hour or hour or so and you know kind of bring the temperature down even a little bit more so um, the time we're going to run our, our heavy loads at the same time that the air conditioner is on is going to be on a sunny day and it's going to be at that optimum time of the day you know between like 10 and 2 and when she does a load of laundry, she sets the temperature of the water at tap cold instead of warm. That way the water heater's not kicking on because the water heater, that's a huge energy hog. And then when we put the clothes in the dryer, um, we're going to do that usually around 11 or 12 in, in, in the morning or, or noon because then the sun is drying the clothes. We're not touching the batteries. It's 100% solar. And even with the AC running, if the washing machine and the dryer are going and the AC is running, we're still taking in enough solar that we're not touching our batteries. It's all solar that's, that's running those loads. And we'll do the same thing with the dishwasher because when the dishwasher is running, it is going to use hot water, so the water heater is going to kick on. So we're running the water heater, the dishwasher, and the air conditioner all at the same time. 
plus all these other appliances I've to told you about, you know, the two, two freezers and two fridges and the well pumps, those are all just kicking on at will. Um, I don't have any control over that. So we're running major appliances and big loads at the same time, and it's all being done by solar because we're doing it at the right time of day. Now, <clears throat> a couple of days ago, we had rain all day, and it was cloudy all day and yet the battery rack was full because we didn't run any of our big loads. The, I mean, the fri fridges and freezers and stuff were still kicking on and we used the microwave a little bit and I, and I know the wells, the well pumps were kicking on here and there, but we didn't do laundry to run the dishwasher. Um, I take cold showers. I do that every day, not just on cloudy days. I actually prefer cold showers, but by me not taking hot showers, that's also saving us a lot of power by that water heater not kicking on because water heaters are huge energy hogs. So. We're running conventional central air, and we're also running big loads like washers and dryers and, and dishwashers and microwaves and all these different things and water heaters all at the same time because we're doing it on days that are optimal for it and at the time of day that is optimal for it. And that's all it is. It's about planning ahead and then balancing your loads. And if you do that, you can run these modern appliances and central air and all that kind of thing. You just got to manage those loads and do it at the right time. So it's Paul at Greenshire. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.